The Lord be with you and also with you. Well, good morning to one and all on this, the second Sunday after Pentecost, uh, June the 6th. Uh, summer uh, is upon us. Uh, graduation is here. We are honoring our graduates today, both high school and college. Uh, and we're also ordaining and installing a new elder and deacon. So what a wonderful day in church. Uh, only five more of these before we're together again, uh, God willing, uh, in the sanctuary on July the 11th. So mark that date on your calendar. Uh, if you are joining us today for the first time, welcome. We're glad you're here and hope that you find our service uh, instructive and inspiring and uh, of help in getting you through the next week. Uh, if you are a return visitor or guest, we welcome you back and glad you have uh, been with us through these uh, many months. Uh, we are grateful for God's blessing, for God's grace, uh, and for the faith and faithfulness of all of our uh, members and guests and friends. And uh, thank you for uh, bearing with us during these difficult times. Uh, let us call ourselves to worship now with a responsive call to worship to my right. Listen, do you hear it? The love of Christ is poured out for us. Listen, do you hear it? The cloud of the faithful is singing God's praise and the Spirit of God is calling us to worship. Let us worship God together. Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday. Our opening hymn today is Come Thou Almighty King. Let's invite Jesus into our hearts this day for our worship. Join with me please in Come Thou Almighty King. to the illusion of independence and superiority. Forgive us, gracious God, and by your forgiveness, free us from all that keeps us bound. Hear our prayers, O Lord, both spoken and silent. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news, and it is good. When the time was right, God sent Jesus into the world to show the power of God's mercy and steadfast love. 
Jesus accomplished on the cross where God defeated the power of sin and death once and for all. In the name of Jesus, believe the good news. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And let all God's people say, Amen. And now may the peace of Christ that passes all understanding be with you now and forever. And also with you. Jesus taught through his parables and, and the things that he said to so many people. And they still come to us today. When you open your Bible and look in the New Testament, I know in my Bible, his words are all in red so that they can jump out at you and teach you something. We've sung lots of songs about parables, for example. The, the man who built his house on the sand. Things like that. Books are so important. Reading is so important. And especially reading your Bible to hear the words of Jesus, to hear those, those things that God has told us to do and not to, to do. Our song today is about this. And it's called Teach Me, Lord. That can be a kind of our prayer each day. Teach me, Lord, how to live my life better. Listen, please. about summer vacation. That's the time we take a little break from our studies and, and uh, get out and swim and hike and camp and go to the beach and the mountains and all kind of wonderful things. Couldn't do a lot of that last summer, but this summer things are getting, uh, getting safer to get out there, and so we're grateful for that. We are celebrating learning and schooling today because uh, we have some very good friends of ours graduating from high school next week, and uh, also we had a few graduate from college a few weeks ago. And so uh, I have a bunch of books here with me this morning. He's excited. He, he loves to learn, although sometimes uh, it hurts his brain when he has to study too hard, but, but he's a good sport about it. Uh, I, I have here what I want to show you. 
Uh, and this is uh, my kindergarten graduation picture uh, taken with my buddies and me uh, in June of 1955. We're all standing on the front steps of First Baptist Church in Burlington, North Carolina. And I am the, the third one over. Let's see. I'm right here. Third one over on the third row from the top. That's me. And I'm ready from ear to ear because I have just been given my first diploma. <laughs> and I'm so excited. And uh, we all love it when we are able to accomplish a task and learn something and, and, and be acknowledged for that with uh, graduations and diplomas. So anyway, this morning I want to talk to you about the importance of, of learning, of, of gaining knowledge about the world we live in. It makes us a much, much happier, much um, more uh, loving and, and a kinder person when we gain education and learn the, what, the way things are, why they are, and especially when we learn about uh, God's will. Now, just say if I didn't know how to spell uh, anti-disestablishmentarianism, which just happens to be, I think, the second longest word in the English language, well, what, what kind of book would I use? What kind of book would I use? Well, it might be a good idea to use Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary. I just look it up, and it's in there, and it'll tell me how to spell it. Okay. Well, what if I was writing a, a theme paper in English class, and uh, I had used the, the, the word wonderful too many times, and I wanted to have another word that meant sort of the same thing, but was a different word. What would I get? I would get Roger's International Thesaurus. Because this, get, this is a book of synonyms. Helps us uh, uh, write papers that uh, aren't repetitive. Uh, say the same words over and over again. Okay, what if, uh, what if I wanted to know what the Greek word agape meant? Well, I think I would use a Greek-English lexicon, which is a Greek dictionary. I can look it up and it'll tell me exactly what agape means. And by the way, it means unconditional love. Uh, what if I wanted to know how many children uh, Jacob uh, had uh, with his two wives, uh, Leah and uh, Rachel? Well, I can look it up in a Harper's Bible commentary. Very handy tool. What if I wanted to know where uh, uh, Jerusalem was uh, in Israel? Well, I have here uh, Harper's Bible Dictionary that has some, some wonderful maps in it as well. And I can find out exactly where Jerusalem is. What if I wanted to learn uh, how to pronounce uh, Jehoshaphat or uh, Tiglath Pileser or Belshazzar? There are people in the Bible, believe it or not. Well, I have here this book called Harper's Bible Pronunciation Guide. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it tells you exactly how to pronounce those hard to pronounce names. So I think I've got just about everything there is here. Uh, oh, what if I wanted to find out where to find joy, peace, uh, happiness, um, kindness, goodness, where would I look to find? Where would I look that up? Well, how about this? The Harper Collins Study Bible. That's right. It's all in there about how to find all those wonderful spiritual things that we seek, like peace and joy and love and kindness and goodness. That's the best book there is. Now, so I know you love to study, but sometimes too much of a good thing is just that too much. So it's almost summertime and you're looking forward to summer vacation. I hope you have a great one and a safe one. And uh, by the way, when you go back to school, uh, whenever you go back, I know that everybody's on different tracks nowadays. Uh, think about your teachers and give thanks for them. And you might even think about taking an, an apple. Uh, be sure to wash it before you take it, okay? 
And uh, I, have, I look back over my life and I am so thankful to God that he has given me wonderful teachers and professors and mentors uh, and pastors and uh, Sunday school teachers who have helped me learn about God's beautiful and wonderful world and what a great place it is, uh, especially when we know where we need to be. So I'm going to sign off now. Uh, I, I better wait. I'm, I'm dying to take a bite out of this apple, but uh, I better, uh, I better, we better pray first. I don't pray, I don't pray well with a mouthful. Okay, Izzy, uh, lend me a paw, and uh, if you can hold hands uh, uh, with your uh, uh, family and let us pray together. Dear God, thank you for education for teachers and professors, for all those who teach us about your world. We give you thanks that you sent Jesus to show us how to live, how to love, even how to pray. And let all God's people say, Amen. It's good stuff. See you next week. Our second lesson this morning comes from that wonderful 12th chapter of Paul's letter to the Roman Christians. He is uh, talking about two different kingdoms, the kingdom of this world and God's kingdom, God's reign over God's followers. So listen to how Paul contrasts and compares those two. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are the one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to the prophecy, in a portion, in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the preacher in preaching, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, here we are in what we call the summer months. The summer solstice is a little less than three weeks away. On uh, the 21st, thereabouts, it, it creeps uh, either forward or backward, depending upon the vagaries of the uh, solar and lunar calendars. Never have figured all that out. <clears throat> but for better or worse, uh, as I look back over the span of my seven decades in this world, it has become quite clear to me that God gave me the gift of curiosity. I have always had a strong desire to know how things work and where people and things come from. One of my earliest memories from childhood was watching a late afternoon television show, can't for the life of me remember what it was, 
But my mother was in the kitchen, I was in the living room. She was preparing dinner and I was uh, enthralled by this uh, TV drama. And when the commercial came on, I remember dashing into the kitchen and telling my mother in summary fashion what I had just seen uh, in that program. Uh, I remember two distinct feelings from that memory. One, uh, trying to tell her as accurately as I could what I had just seen. I wanted to get it right. And number two, uh, being afraid that I was not going to be able to get back into the living room on time and therefore miss some of the program. Knowledge, understanding, learning, science, awareness, and wisdom are great and wonderful gifts from God on high. In the beginning, God created human beings in God's own image and likeness. God made us a little lower than the angels, the psalmist tells us. He gave us a body and a soul and a brain and told us to fill the earth and multiply. He also told us to take care of the earth. It was our responsibility to love God with all that we have and are, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Today we are celebrating a milestone in the life of our high school and college graduates. Their last 13 years plus, or 17 years plus, in, in the case of our college and graduate students, um, are all about knowledge and information and learning and education. But ultimately, God wants us to land at that place we call wisdom. I'll never forget lining up in front of Walter Williams High School Auditorium uh, in June of 1968 with my good friends. I just happened to have a lot of friends who, his last name began with an H, we were all there together. It was hot, it was humid, and then I, we heard the first chords of pop and circumstance, so we stood erect and marched forward down those aisles to uh, adoring and proud parents and grandparents and jealous siblings wanting to get home. Uh, it was a heady, heady experience, one full of satisfaction for and relief from uh, the 12 plus years of academic achievement that had preceded it in anticipation of several more to come in college. You know, we Presbyterians have always taken education very, very seriously. The English word educate in Latin is educare. It means to lead out of, as in leading out of the darkness uh, and ignorance into the light of truth and understanding. When we consider how complex and complicated and powerful the human brain is, we can only marvel that, uh, and give thanks to God for this wonderful gift. And what a shame it is to waste any of it. Our first lesson today is the sacred Shema of Judaism that commissions parents to teach God's commandments to their children by day and by night so that they will know God's will and be able to walk on the path that leads to life and faith and hope and love. The book of Proverbs is an instructional manual for parents to teach their children that wisdom is far better than silver, gold, and precious jewels. It says that if parents train their children in the way they should go, when they are old, they will not depart from it. One of the most revelatory passages in the Bible is when Solomon was made third king of Israel and God offered him anything he asked for. When Solomon asked for wisdom instead of power or wealth or fame, God was so impressed by that request that he gave him not only wisdom, but also all the other stuff too. Jesus told his followers to seek first the kingdom of heaven and God would bless us with the material things we desire as well. 
He also said that if we know the truth, it will set us free. The English, Scots, and Germans were the three primary groups that immigrated to North Carolina in the 1700s and early 1800s. They came to the new colonies seeking religious freedom and economic and social opportunities that had been denied to them in the stratified hierarchies of old Europe. After they built their log cabins and cleared the land of trees, they built churches and schools. Most of the schools were started by Presbyterian ministers who placed a high value on the Bible's injunction to seek knowledge and wisdom. Samuel McCorkle established Zion Parnassus, just outside of Salisbury. David Caldwell started the Caldwell Academy in Greensboro. William Bingham created the Hillsboro uh, Academy. David Hughes started Hughes Academy in Orange County. And Henry Patillo established a school in Alamance County a few miles from where I grew up. All of these men were Presbyterian ministers who were serving churches at the same time, who believed in the power of learning to lead people out of the darkness of fear and superstition and ignorance into the light of faith and love. And Presbyterians would go on to establish institutions of higher learning too, places like Princeton, Davidson, Hampton, Sydney, Peace, Queens, St. Andrews, Lees McRae, and Montreat, where students could prepare for the ministry and other uh, professions like law and medicine and others. And even though UNC and Chapel Hill was the first state university in the, uh, to be chartered in America, a disproportionate number of Presbyterian ministers and elders were involved in the creation of that institution and served on its first board of trustees and faculty. Yes, even though we Protestants strongly believe in justification by grace alone through faith alone, we also believe that it, an informed faith is far superior to an uninformed faith. Surely this is why Jesus taught us to love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. So, graduates, I want to congratulate you today uh, on your due diligence and your self-discipline for the past 13 or 17 plus years. We commend you for attending all those classes, listening to all those lectures, writing all those papers, taking all those quizzes, tests, and exams, for burning all that midnight oil, studying, and wearing out all those enter keys on your laptops. You have done this consistently and earnestly, and are now not only being honored for your academic achievements, but also welcomed into the educated world where you will be able to apply the knowledge you have gained to become a better person, a responsible citizen, neighbor, and colleague in advancing God's world and working for liberty and justice for all. But let me share a little bit of advice with you this morning, if I may, especially the, the college and graduate school graduates. Education is not a temporary part of your life. It does not represent the end of your education, but really the beginning of a lifelong learning in a variety of forms. That's why schools and colleges uh, call graduation exercises commencement. That means beginning. So I encourage you to keep reading, keep exploring, travel as much as you are able, remain curious, and keep asking questions. We live in a fast-changing world that will require you now more than ever to keep learning in order just to keep up. In our second lesson this morning, Paul warns the Christians in Rome not to be conformed to this world but instead to be transformed by the renewal of the mind, that they may prove what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable and perfect. Now, the world is not a bad place. This is our home. God created it, called it good, and this is where we belong now. 
But Paul also said that we Christians are in the world, but we are not of it. What he meant by that was that we now have dual citizenship. We have taken up citizenship in God's kingdom, and that is our primary citizenship. What God, what the Bible calls the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. This is the redeemed and transformed reign that Jesus taught about and made possible through his death and resurrection. This world, God's kingdom, marches to the beat of a different drummer, and his name is Jesus. A different drummer tells the world without God a different cadence, a different march. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, is the world of faith where people love God unreservedly, holding nothing back. They love their neighbors, not just superficially, but as they love themselves. They even pray for their enemies. This is the world where faith, hope, and love surpass power, fame, and wealth. It's the world of grace, mercy, forgiveness, love, humility, modesty, and empathy. It's the, way, it's the world where all God's people matter because all people have been created in the image and likeness of God and therefore deserve our respect and our love because God loves them. I love that old bumper sticker. I wish I could find one now. God loves you. And I'm working on it. That's what God calls us to do. Graduates, this world desperately needs your knowledge, your new ideas, your energy, your focus, your idealism, and your commitment to making this world a better place than we have made it. Where there is more justice, more peace, more understanding, more empathy, and most of all, more love, the greatest of God's gifts. As Paul put it in the next chapter in Romans, owe no one anything except to love one another. For those who love their neighbor have fulfilled the law in its entirety. So congratulations, new graduates. Enjoy this moment. You have earned it. And please know that your parents, your teachers, your professors, your friends, your Sunday school teachers, your youth advocates, your PK leaders, and all of us, all of us who help raise you are very, very proud of you. So uh, enjoy uh, the days ahead and remember that God is always with you there to teach you, to encourage you, to forgive you when you need it, and to pick you up when you stumble, and uh, put you upon the way, the way that leads to the truth that will set us all free. Let us now pray. Oh, loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the ability to put that knowledge to good and righteous use. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ who has given us this new world, this new kingdom, this new realm of yours, which is where you want us to live, a world full of truth and goodness and love and grace. For all this, we give you thanks and praise your holy name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Please join me in affirming what we believe by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we are pleased to honor our high school and college graduates. Uh, Natalie Pierce, uh, is in a, another week, will be graduating from Wakefield High School, and she will be attending UNCW in the fall. Mackenzie Long is graduating from Franklin Academy in Wake Forest and will be attending East Carolina University in the fall. Uh, also, uh, Nathan Brown, uh, graduated from high school uh, in Houston, uh, and I do not have where he is headed, but we'll pass that on to you when we get it. Uh, Kayla Pierce received her uh, bachelor's degree in music uh, from Wingate University, and we are very proud of this accomplishment, and Sam Moore graduated recently from uh, Liberty Law School in Virginia. Please know that we uh, are extremely proud of all of our graduates. Uh, we are grateful for the faithfulness and the diligence of their parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and uh, teachers and professors uh, and uh, fellow students uh, in the process of education that has brought them to this place in their uh, journey of faith and life. And we celebrate all of that. And please know, graduates, that even though uh, you'll be leaving us as your primary home for a little while and maybe forever, uh, that you go with our blessings, uh, our prayers, with great memories that we made together, uh, with our respect and adoration and, and gratitude that we were given by God's grace uh, a small part uh, in your faith formation and, and in your education. So go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness. Uh, I am unable to present to you a gift at this point, but uh, it will be coming to you uh, in the mail. Uh, and it's uh, that wonderful book uh, entitled, If You Know Who You Are, You Will Know What to Do. So I encourage you to read it, and I hope and pray it will help you uh, along the way in your continuing journey. So let us now offer God uh, a prayer of thanksgiving for this wonderful milestone in your life. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of a brain, a mind to know and understand you and your love, uh, your will and your way and your commandments. And most of all, to understand the grace and the mercy behind the gift of Jesus Christ to all who would receive it through faith. We give thanks today for our graduates from high school and college. We are extremely proud of their accomplishments and we honor them for their diligence and commitment. 
Oh God, continue to bless them along life's journey. Uh, keep them open to learning along the way. Uh, and we pray for good health, for uh, success in their endeavors, especially in discerning the gifts you have given them and to continue developing those gifts so that they can use them to find their rightful place in your world and to have a vocation that will contribute to society and make this world a better place. Oh God, we give you thanks that we have been a part of their lives and that they have been a part of our lives. And we give you thanks for how that will continue even as a distance separates us in the, the days to come. And let all God's people say together, Amen. Scripture teaches us that there are a variety of spiritual gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is, is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ, the church, and individually members of it. We are called into the church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling, to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our servant Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to a particular service as deacons or ruling elders or ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's gift to the church, assuring that his ministry continues among us and in the world. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world, for the ordering and the governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and celebration of the sacraments. We are happy to present to you today a new elder and a new deacon elect, elected by you after having been nominated by the nominating committee and uh, trained uh, by uh, me and approved by the session. And so I am happy to present to you today as elder Lexi Everett, she is, uh, in case you're unaware, is still in high school and uh, is, uh, uh, is, of course, being uh, elected and uh, serving under uh, provision in our Book of Order for that purpose. Uh, we are also ordaining and, and installing as deacon Kitty Barco. Uh, so we are very uh, proud of their sense of call to this office and their preparation uh, and for they are ready to style to stand before you to, to answer their uh, questions, the constitutional questions, the ordination vows. Lexi and Kitty, in your baptism, you were claimed by the love of God, clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ, and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. Now you have been called by God through the voice of this congregation for new service and ministry in Jesus' name. In accord with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, please show your commitment to this calling by responding appropriately to these questions. Do you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? I do. I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? I do. I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church? as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do? And will you be instructed and led by these confessions 
as you lead the people of God. Do you and will you? I do and I will. I do and I will. Will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? I will. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity, and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? I will. I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? I will. I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? I will. I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? I do. I do. Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I will. I will. And now, Lexi, this question is for you alone. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in councils of the church? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. And Katie, this is your question as a deacon. Will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. Having heard Kitty and Lexi answer their ordination questions in the affirmative, I will now put to you the two questions required by our Book of Order as a commitment to their leadership. Do we, the members of the church, accept Kitty and Lexi as deacon and ruling elder, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, we do. Do we agree to, to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Christ Jesus, who alone is the head of the church? If so, please let it be known by saying we do. At this time, I would ask Kitty and Lexi to stand. Uh, we cannot be together for the historic laying on of the hands because of our virtual distancing, uh, but we are going to do our best to, to create a facsimile. So, uh, Lexi and Kitty, if you would now kneel on the floor, and I'm going to ask you to take your right hand and place it on your head, which will be symbolic of uh, everyone else now, uh, elders, deacons, and ministers, and PCUSA or uh, any Reformed church uh, to stand and place your hand upon your own hand. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will be placing our hands upon the hands of Lexi uh, and Kitty. Everybody in place, let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you thanks and praise. Throughout the ages and in every place you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation by your grace. We are grateful for ancestors of the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone, for judges and monarchs who ruled in righteousness and peace, for prophets and apostles, who spoke bold words of mercy and of truth, for leaders and teachers in every age, who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, 
but to serve and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, he proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all he said and did. O oh, gracious God, pour out your spirit now upon your servants, Kitty and Lexi, whom you call by baptism as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. And, O oh, gracious God, pour out your spirit of power upon the whole church, that we may be for you a holy people baptized to serve in the world. Sustain your church in its ministry. Ground us in the gospel. Secure our hope in Christ. Strengthen our service to the outcast and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace in our life together, that we may be effective servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus our Lord. So fill these elders and deacons now with your Holy Spirit. Grant them wisdom and understanding and help them to follow Christ as their example so that together with their colleagues serving on the session and the board of deacons, they will lead all of us in the way you would have us travel. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. We can now remove hands. I would ask Lexi and Kitty please to stand where you are. I am now happy and privileged to declare that you are now a deacon and a ruling elder, ordained to the ministries of service and governance in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Whatever you do, in spirit or in deed or in word, let all of this show forth the one you follow, Jesus the Christ, the one who has given us new life because of God's grace and mercy and forgiveness. Please know that we love you. Uh, we promise to work with you and to uh, abide by God's will according to the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I will now extend to you the, the right hand of fellowship and I would ask every elder and deacon and minister at home to do the same thing. And uh, over the airwaves, we are now extending to you the right hand of welcome to this form of service in Christ Church. May God bless you now and forever, and we give thanks for this privilege of service. And let all God's people say together, Amen. children, the gift of grandchildren, the gift of so many blessings. All of these are wonderful, uh, but it is truly uh, uh, more blessed to, to give to those we love than to receive, uh, although that is golden too. Uh, so thank you very much for your generosity and uh, giving of yourselves, your prayers, your, your time, your talent, and your financial means to support the ministry and the life and the mission of our congregation. Uh, so let us uh, go to God in prayer now to give thanks for these gifts and ask God to bless them and use them. Let us pray. 
Oh, loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of Christ. Bless these gifts and offerings now and continue to use them, to use them as you see fit in the carrying on and the carrying forward of the ministry of Jesus Christ here in this community and even around the world. And let all God's people say together, Amen. Our final hymn in our worship today is called as Partners in Christ's Service. As we go forth from our worship today, be thinking of being a partner for Christ. We need to be his hands and his feet and his voice. Help us to go help others in the way that Jesus would have us do. Join with me and call as partners in Christ's service.